Hey everyone, this is Dr. Robin McKillop with Get That GED. And today we're gonna to do, uh, we're gonna run through some inequality problems and we'll do a reading or two for language arts. All right, let's get started on inequalities. I'm gonna switch my camera. Okay. So it's actually a good one, a piece of paper. So inequality equations are very similar to the regular old algebraic equations where you know you've got x plus two equals four, and you've got to isolate the x. So um, in inequalities, it works the same way, except in one specific instance, and we'll go over those. All right, let me see these. We'll start with x plus seven is less than 10. I'm gonna zoom a little closer. Yeah, that's better. So in an algebraic equation, whether it's an equal sign or an inequality, you're gonna isolate the x. So you need to get rid of the seven. Take away seven from this side. And as soon as you do that, you have to do the exact same thing on the other side. So take away seven from both sides. Seven minus seven is zero, it's gone. So you are left with X on this side and then 10 minus seven is three. So your inequality is X is less than three. Draw another one. X minus three is greater than negative four. Same exact thing, we need to isolate that X. So we're going to get rid of the three by adding three because it's a negative originally. We wanna zero it out. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So now we've got X here is greater than negative four plus three is negative one. So these aren't too bad. There's nothing uh, really weird about them. They're pretty straightforward. Let's do a couple more of these shorter ones. Let's do X minus seven is greater than or equal to negative five. Oh, we shouldn't smash these all together, huh? And again, we need to clear, we wanna isolate the X. So we're gonna clear this negative seven by adding seven to it, which means we add seven on this side. What you do on one side, you do on the other. The sevens here are zero, we now have X. Bring down your inequality greater than or equal to negative five plus seven is positive two. So X is greater than or equal to two. And let's grab another one of these. Which one is obnoxious? Ah, let's do X minus negative nine. Everybody loves these. X minus negative nine equals, oh, sorry, it's not equal, we're not doing equal greater than or equal to negative four, greater than or equal to negative four. Okay, so this is one thing you always have to keep an eye on. If you have two negatives in a row or a minus and a negative, however it makes sense to you, if there are two of these in a row, that turns into a plus sign. So this is actually X plus nine is greater than or equal to negative four. So that's always an interesting little thing. They do that a lot. And then you're back to a fairly recognizable equation. You're gonna get rid of the nine, take it away here, which means you take it away on this side. That leaves you with X over here, bring down the inequality and then negative four and negative nine should be negative 13, if I know how to add. 
All right, let's try some longer. And these will get into a, a little bit of a weird, a weird thing you're going to have to memorize. It's not on your formula sheet. It's just one of those things you have to memorize. So let's try 5x is greater than or equal to negative 25. So 5x greater than, equal to negative 25. This one's going to be pretty normal. You'll see. We need to separate the 5 from the x. And this is a multiplication problem. We just got done doing adding, subtracting. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. We're going to separate the 5 and the x by dividing out the 5. But again, what we do on one side, we have to do on the other. This cancels. Those 5s are gone. So you just have x over here, greater than or equal to, and then you just do the calculation here. Negative 25 divided by 5 is negative 5. That's not too bad. Now, I'm going to show you a weird one. This is the piece you have to remember. We've got negative 4x is less than or equal to negative 16. And again, we're going to divide out that negative 4. Divide out negative 4. Divide out negative 4. This cancels. 4s are gone. You're left with x greater than or equal to negative 16 divided by negative 4 is 4. All right, here's the weird thing. Because you divided by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. This is not the correct answer. It'll probably be on uh, the answer sheet, but it's not the correct one. The correct answer is x is greater than or equal to 4. And that is only because you divided by a negative number. It's just a weird thing, only with inequalities, only when dividing by a negative number. Otherwise, inequality equations are just like the regular algebraic equation. This is your one caveat. Divide by negative, flip the sign. Because you know they'll give you both of these answers on that GED test. So, and we'll do a couple of those just hopefully to, to get it to gel. And it's one of those things you've got to memorize because it, it's nowhere. It's not on your formula sheet. It's just one of those weird little math things. All right, let's try, oh, this is division. So we've got x over 2 is greater than or equal to 20. Now, division problems are not as common, which is actually too bad because they're, they're faster and easier to do than any of them. All you're going to do is take your denominator because the opposite of dividing is multiplying. You're going to multiply both sides by 2. And that immediately cancels out the 2s, leaving you with x. And then 20 times 2 is 40. And you're done. I like division problems in equations because they're fast. And they take a lot less writing. I mean, look how many lines for multiplication. Much easier to divide. So let's do another of the one you have to remember. Negative 2x is less than 8. And you just you do it the, the normal way until you get to the end. We're going to divide out that negative 2 to separate it from the x. And we're going to divide it out on both sides. So these are gone. We only have x left. x is less than 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. But we have to flip the sign because of that negative 2. So x is greater than negative four. 
get rid of that one. So it's a weird one for sure, but just the, just tell yourself you have to remember it during the test and you'll get it. There's a couple of things that you actually have to totally remember uh, because they're nowhere on the formula sheet and they don't, they're not necessarily intuitive. It's not something you would know if you hadn't learned it previously. It wouldn't just, you know, pop into your head to do it that way during the test. So just remember that. The other one you have to remember is um, half a sphere. I might talk about that in a minute. All right, let's do a couple more of these. Uh, let's do negative 10x is greater than negative 20. Okay, that's kind of blurry, isn't it? Let me clear that up. That's better. Negative 10x is greater than negative 20. And again, to separate the 10 from the x, we're going to divide it out because those two will cancel. Those are gone. We just have x. And what are we going to do with that sign? We're going to flip it because this was the key right here. That tells us we have to flip it. If it's a positive, we don't have to do anything. But if it's a negative that we're dividing by, flip the sign, and then finish the calculation. Negative 20 divided by negative 10 is 2. So x is less than 2. All right, let's do some even bigger ones. Because you generally get much larger problems, which you might love or you might not. They don't make it easy on you, that's for sure. Let's do. We'll do uh, five, five, six, seven, eight. So in five is m over negative three, m over negative three minus six is less than or equal to one. Now, when you get a problem like this, it's a division problem. The first thing you wanna do is clear any extra numbers. Get rid of this negative six because it cleans it up much better than if you started messing around with this. So get rid of that six, add six to it on this side, which means we also add six on this side. And that gives us m over negative three is less than or equal to six and one is seven. Now it's cleaner, it's division. So we're gonna use multiplication to clear it. So multiply both sides by that negative three. These guys are gone. You're left with M greater than or equal to, because you did not divide. So it's pretty normal. Uh, seven times negative three is negative 21. Nice. All right, and I am recording this. I will make sure um, I post it in the group. And if any of you want it directly or have questions, you can uh, private chat me your email and you just go to the chat at the bottom and then where it says, um, who are you? Who are you talking to? What does it say exactly? Yeah, it says to everyone, that's the default. If you click on everyone, you'll get everybody's name and then you can just send your email to me. All right, let's try a couple more of these. Negative 5m plus 3 greater than or equal to 28. Oops, negative 5m plus 3 greater than or equal to 28. And again, get rid of the extra number first. It's just, it's easier. Take away three, take away three. This zeroes out, so this is gone. You just have negative 5m on this side. And you bring down your sign because you're not changing anything yet. 
And then 28 minus three is 25. Now we've got to separate that negative five from the M. So we're going to divide it out. There's your key that you have to flip the sign. It's a negative five. Divide both sides by negative five. This is canceled. You only have M it is no longer greater to or equal than. It is less than or equal to 25 divided by negative five is negative five. Nice. So the worst thing about inequalities is this. When you're dividing by a negative number, and that's all you have to remember, is if it's a negative number that you divide by, Right here, switch the sign, flip it. All right, let's do a couple more. They get a little bit longer. 4x minus 1 greater than or equal to x plus 8. Now, the nice thing about these, you can start anywhere you want. You will always get to the same answer, no matter if you decide to get rid of the 4x or the x or the negative 1 or the 8. Do whatever makes sense to you. If you like doing it in a certain order, stick with it. Always do what makes sense to you, even if other people do it differently, because it's more important that you are comfortable enough with it that you don't have a problem when it shows up. So one of the things I don't like, I do not like negative variables. So I'm going to get rid of the x. So I'm going to take away x from both sides. And that gives me 3x minus 1 greater than or equal to. That's gone. I only have 8 left on this side. Now I'm forced to get rid of the 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And now I've got 3x, because these are gone, greater than or equal to 8 plus 1 is 9. And I just ran out of room. I'm going to go up here. And I'll get a new piece of paper. So that is 3x greater than equal 9. And now I need to separate that 3 from its x and divide it out from both sides. These cancel. I just have x greater than or equal to 9 divided by 3 is 3. And everything stays the same because this is a positive number. You're dividing by a positive. So nothing fancy. All right, let me grab some. Clean paper since I scribble all over mine and should probably be neater about it. I'm going to do number nine. I think I said number eight, but I'm going to do number nine for sure because it's just longer. And all you're going to do is simplify first. So we've got four times 2x minus 3 less than or equal to negative 3x minus 1. Now this here, this little piece of the equation, this is called distributive property. You'll never be asked to define distributive property. This is what it is. You've got two numbers and a variable inside of parentheses, you can't do anything with a 2x minus 3 because you can't add or subtract things that are different. And then you've got a number on the outside to multiply. So this is a distributive property. You may see it in the instructions. Don't let it throw you because as soon as you see this, you'll remember what to do. And all you're going to do is take the number on the outside and multiply it by the two numbers inside. So 4 times 2x is 8x. You can multiply and divide variables and numbers, but you cannot add and subtract them. They have to be the same. 
either have to be numbers or they have to be the same variable. And then bring down your minus sign. Four times three is 12. Bring down your sign. And it's still negative three X minus one. All right, now, which one do I want to get rid of? Ah, neither one's great. I'm going to get rid of the 3x. So I'm going to add 3x to this because that zeroes it out on this side. And that means I add 3x over here. And 8, 9, 10, 11. So we've got 11x minus 12, less than, equal to, this is gone. We just have negative 1. And now I have to get rid of the 12. So I'm going to add 12, add 12. Well, this one will be interesting. 11x, because that's all that's left on that side, less than or equal to negative 1 and 12 is positive 11. One more step. We need to separate these two. So we're going to divide out that 11, divide out that 11. We have x less than or equal to 11 divided by 11 is 1. Nice. So even if they get or make them give you a really long one, you're just going step by step. Do any simplification first, and then get your equation to where you have an x on both sides, a number on both sides, if that's how many things are happening in it, then take care of one thing in this, this second equation. Decide which one you're going to get rid of, get rid of it. Then you're down to three um, digits. Get rid of the next one. You're down to two. And then you separate the x, and you've got your number. Nice. How are you guys feeling about those? Sort of okay. They will be on the test, unfortunately. All right, let me see if there is a longer one that you need to be concerned with. And again, the biggest thing to remember with inequalities is if you have to divide by a negative number, then you want to make sure you flip the inequality. Oh, look at these. No, that's not what I was thinking of. Is it? Yes, this is the one I'm thinking of. This is probably more likely to be on, your, on the GED test than just a plain one, because look what they've done. Negative two, is less than x plus one is less than three. They kind of give, gave you a double whammy. They gave you two inequalities in one. So there's a way to deal with these. And as long as you can remember this during the test, it's, it'll make your life so much easier. You're gonna break that apart because you don't actually wanna do two inequalities at a time. So we're gonna start with I'm going to write the whole thing down first. Negative 2 less than x plus 1 less than 3. All right. So that's the equation. And that's the inequality. It looks not like it's supposed to. All right. Here, we're going to start with negative 2 less than x plus 1. Ignore this part for now solve this. So here, we're going to get rid of the one on this side, which means we're going to take away one here. Now we've got negative three is less than x. So what you did was you got rid of the second inequality and solved that equation. Now we're going to come back to the original and we're going to get rid of the first inequality, and we're going to solve the equation that's left. So this time, we're going to do x 
plus one is less than three. And again, we're gonna get take away one here, which means we take away one here. X is less than three minus one is two. So you combine these, negative three less than x less than two. That's how you do those double inequalities. You just cover up one, do that equation, cover up the other, do that equation, and then put them together. Just piece them right together. Nice. Let's do a longer one because some of these are big. Let me look at these. Uh, let's do let's do number four. We've got negative two less than two x plus four less than or equal to eight. And we're going to break it into two equations. We're going to get rid of that second inequality. So we're going to deal with the negative two less than two x plus four. That's going to be our first. Negative two less than two x plus four. And we're just going to get rid of that four. Take away four, take away four. Negative two and negative four is negative six less than two X. One more step, we have to get rid of the two. Divide both sides by two and I should have had a cleaner piece of paper again. Negative six divided by two is negative three is less than X. All right, I'll try to keep this clean up here to start with a new piece. This is the second problem we're going to do. 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to 8. So 2x plus 4 less than or equal to 8. You're going to get rid of the 4. Take it away from both sides. That leaves you with 2x on this side. And 8 divided by 4, sorry, 8 divided by negative 4. Wait, no, sorry, it's 8 minus 4. So I screwed that. Don't listen to me. It's 8 minus 4. 2x is less than, oh man, this is bad. I crammed all this in. Sorry about that. One more step. Divide out that 2, divide out that 2. And that leaves us x less than or equal to four divided by two is two. So we just come back over here to where we had gotten the, the first part of the answer. That X is the same as this one. Just do your less than equal to two. So your answer is negative three is less than X is less than or equal to two. I gotta use bigger pieces of paper. What do you think of those? Good, bad? A little bad. <laughs> it takes, I mean, they're daunting when you look at these. That was pretty complicating. Yeah, it's, they're big. Definitely was. <laughs> well, and we'll just keep doing them because that's how, that's how you get used to them. And if any of you want these pages so you can practice, because the really nice thing is, they tell you how to do things in case you forget. It's an awesome book, but I will be happy to email you these pages. And then I would suggest if you're going to, if you're pretty good at studying, do two of them a day. Don't do the whole page because you'll remember how to do them that night or that day. You may remember how to do them the next day, but a week later you might forget. So if you do two tonight, to tomorrow, to the next day, to the next day, you're going to remember how to do it when you see it. 
So work with your brain because your brain likes small and often more than it likes a big old page of them all at one time. Because it won't store it. It'll store it in short term if you do them all. But if you just do one or two a day, it'll store it in long term. So when you get to the test, you're like, I totally know how to do this. And that's what I want for you because the test is bad enough. You might as well be able to knock out some of these problems. Let's try. I don't think we did this one. Let's try this one. Number two. It is negative seven less than or equal to x. Got a plus, yes, plus five, less than two. And so anytime you get an equation and you've got two inequalities, you basically have two equations to solve. So, and you don't even have to do them in order. I always cover up the, the end one, just it's my habit. If you want to cover this one up first, it's just fine. Just keep them in order. So I'm going to cover up the let or two is greater than or the less than whatever this is. Just cover it up. This is the equation we're going to solve. And that is negative seven less than or equal to x plus five. And then once you get to this point, what you're really trying to do is separate and isolate the x. And this one's nice because x is by itself. It's not attached to a number, but we still have to get rid of the five. So we want x all by itself. So we're gonna take away five. We wanna zero this out on this side because that leaves us just x. Five minus five is zero. So we only have x over here, but we have to do the exact same thing on this side. So negative seven and negative five is negative 12, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, negative 12. And then you bring down your sign. This is your first answer. Now we're gonna cover up this inequality. And that is our new equation to solve. X plus five is less than two. So X plus five less than two. And since we wanna get that X all by itself, we're gonna deal with this five. Take it away, but you also have to take it away from the other side. And that leaves us with X, this five is gone is less than two and negative five, negative three. And then you just put these together. Negative 12, less than or equal to, oops, equal to X, less than negative three. It's a lot, I mean, it's, it's two problems in one. And GED loves to give you multiple problems in one. So it is prob it's a high probability you'll get one of these. But when you see it, just know I can only do one at a time. So I'm gonna get rid of that one and solve that equation. When I get my answer, I'm gonna come back to the original equation and solve the other half. And then when I get those two answers, the X is the same. So you bring down your negative 12, your sign, that X, and then the rest of it. Nice. Let's see, is there anything really weird on here? This one's written differently. I'm gonna do number nine just because they wrote it differently. And these are interesting that have the or. So I better do one of those too. Let me do number nine first, and then we'll jump over to the or. 
Okay, so we have got another piece of paper. And they can put these problems in any order and don't let it throw you because you're still doing one step at a time and your goal is to isolate the variable, the X or the N or the M, whatever number or letter they decide to use. So here we've got negative six less than or equal to negative two X plus two less than eight. All right. And we're gonna cover up this part of it, whoops. And we're only gonna deal with that equation there. And that will be, I'm gonna rewrite it so you've got the original negative two X plus two. All right, here's our number with the variable. We'll deal with that last. Let's get rid of that two. So take away two, which means we take away two on this side and negative six and negative two are negative eight. How do you guys feel about adding and subtracting negative numbers? All right. We now have a number attached to X. We didn't have that before, but we know what to do. This is basically a multiplication. This is negative two times X. And so to get rid of that negative two, we have to do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing. So we're gonna divide out negative two because that makes it go away. And then we only have X on this side, but we have to do the exact same thing over here. So negative eight divided by negative two is four, positive four. Now, what are we gonna do with that sign? Because we had to divide. By I'm gonna negative. switch. <laughs> yep, it's gotta go the other direction. So for now, we're done with this side. Now we're gonna come up here and ignore the front end and just solve what's left of that equation. So negative two X plus two less than eight. Let's get rid of that two minus two minus two. That leaves us negative two X less than eight. Uh, minus two is six. Now again, we have to get rid of the negative two. We're gonna divide it out from both sides. This cancels. So we just have X left. Six divided by negative two is negative three. And because we divided by a negative, we're gonna flip that. And then we're going to piece them back together. Four is greater than or equal to X is greater than negative three. Nice. And that's a lot of work. Look at how much writing. It's these are not necessarily fast problems, even when you're comfortable with them. And as everybody knows, it's the timer that, that gets to students. So if you can practice a couple of them over many, many days, it'll just become easier. It'll, it'll be in your long-term memory. And then you can, you can nail them during the test because you won't even have to think about them. All right, let me see about that or what do they want for the or? I don't even know what they want for the or. Let's try it. All right, let's see. 
So they either want 4x plus 2 is greater than 10, or 2x is less than negative 10. These are already separated, so do them that way. And the other one was 2x is less than negative 10. Am I off the page? Almost. All right, there we go. So looking at this one, we need to get rid of that 2. Absolutely. Uh, Mandavi, down, yeah, send me your email, direct message like that, and I will make sure you get these. All right, we're going to get rid of this too. So negative two. Ooh, my thumb looks gross. It's been bleeding. Sorry. Should have checked that. Don't like to have bloody fingers on teaching. We're going to get rid of that negative two. This cancels. Bring down your 4x. Bring down your sign. 10 minus 2 is 8. Then we need to separate the 4 and the x. We're going to divide out the 4 from both sides. And x is greater than 4. Perfect. Then we're going to jump up here and clean this one up, because remember, they said or. So they already separated them for you. And here, um, we just have to break apart the 2 and the x. We don't have to do anything extra. So we're going to divide out the 2. Divide out the two, and this is x is greater than or equal to, or it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's less than negative 10 divided by two is negative five. You can technically put these back together. You'll know if you need to based on the answers on the test. You'll know what to do. They will either give you an answer that looks like this or they will do this to you. Uh, X, they'll already have it combined. So it could be one of two ways, but you'll know because you'll see it in the answer. They won't give you both. They'll give you one or the other. They either combine them or they'll separate them with a comma. All right. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure you'll see the or on GED. GED. You'll definitely see something like this. But I don't think GED does this. But just in case you deal with each one of them, and then based on the answers that they give you, the format, you'll know what your answer is. All right. Let me click back. How was that? I understand it a little bit now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's actually... Um, I think, yeah, I think I understand it a little bit more. <laughs> um, I feel, I feel good about it actually. You know, like I don't, I'm not really lost on it. Um, I was, before you even uh, started explaining how to do it, I kind of finished it and, you know, I just checked my work while you uh, explained it to us and everything. So I'm not too bad on these. Excellent. That's awesome. And I'm gonna, do you guys wanna do a little bit of language arts? In fact, I'm gonna quit recording then record again when I'm separate. <laughs>